The follow through takes us from the contact point with the ball to the natural ending of the swing. And it involves the continuation of all the rotation taking place in the hips and spine, along with the continuation of the pulling and pushing action of the arms on the bat. And it also involves a rollover of the forearms. Now, each of these movements will be discussed here in this video, starting with the hips. At contact, we see that both hips are visible or open to the pitcher and if we follow them through to the end of the swing, we can see them continue to rotate around until they can no longer go any further as long as both feet remain in contact with the ground. Now, interestingly enough, at the end of the follow through seen in this image, both hips end up in medial or internal rotation. And we can see this by starting with the player's right foot and thigh. Notice how his right foot is turned inward toward his body. This is made possible by the right thigh turning inward or immediately at the hip joint. And likewise, notice the left foot too is also turned inward toward his body. And this is made possible by the left thigh turning inward or immediately at the hip joint. This medial rotation of both hips and consequently both thighs and feet is caused by the medial or internal hip rotator muscles which we identified in video number seven of this series as the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, and tensor fascia lata muscles. Now in video number eight of this series we learned that the player's front left leg stiffens during this process where the player's left knee starts to extend or straighten out seen in this image. This stiffening and straightening of the left knee and leg produces a force in the left hip acting in the opposite direction as the right hip and as a result this further assists the hips to open completely toward the pitcher. The muscle in the left leg that helps straighten or extend the knee is the quadriceps muscle. Now let's take a look at the player's spine or perhaps an easier reference point for us to focus on here would be his abdomen and chest. Just like the hips at contact, the chest is visible to the pitcher, and as we follow it through to the end of the swing, we can see the player's chest completely turn and rotate around to the point where it is now facing down the third base line and cannot go any further. If you recall in video number nine of this series, the lateral rotators of the spine on the player's right side of the body were responsible for this movement and these muscles were identified as the external abdominal oblique, multifidus spinae, and rotatoris spinae muscles. Now let's focus on the arms, beginning with the player's left arm. We learned in video number 10 of this series that the left arm pulls the bat around and the muscles responsible for this movement were the posterior deltoid, rhomboids, and middle fibers of the trapezius muscles. And by virtue of the positioning of the left arm during the swing, two of the rotator cuff muscles were also involved, those being the infraspinatus and teres minor muscles. Now, regarding the player's right arm, we also learned in video number 10 of this series that it pushes on the bat handle, and the muscles responsible for this movement after contact are the pectoralis major, serratus anterior, coracobrachialis, and anterior deltoid muscles. Finally, the wrists and forearms do a rollover after contact where the right forearm, which is initially in a supinated position at contact seen here, ends up in a pronated position at the end of the swing seen here. And the left forearm which is in a pronated position at contact shown in this image, ends up in a supinated position at the end of the swing seen in this image. These alternating forearm positions enable the player to swing the bat unimpeded through contact so that there is no loss of speed or power. The muscles in the right forearm that pronate the forearm are the pronator teres, 
and pronator quadratus muscles. And the muscles in the left forearm that supinate the forearm are the biceps brachii and supinator muscles. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to, please leave a comment or suggestion regarding this segment of The Anatomy of the Baseball Swing.